Welcome back to Andrew Says, everybody. I wouldn't lie to you, except for maybe this once. And consider donating to me on Patreon, please. Um, maybe you think I say good things. Maybe you think I'm a really attractive dude. Maybe you think I look like a young David Duchovny. Maybe you want me to shave my beard. All those things and more if you donate on Patreon. Tommy Robinson's going back to jail for the same thing again, as you may have heard by now. And what I'm seeing online, of course, is... People don't like them because that's pushed to the top. We know that. But they're saying, people get saying to me, to others, that's not the whole story here. You're being misled. He almost ruined the trial. There's way more to it. So I started reading into it, and people kept pointing to this independent article. And I looked into it. I looked into the argument people were making, and I read the article. And it's one of the worst ideas, one of the most frustrating ideas I've ever seen. And if you look at, right at the title right away, how close the EDL uh, founder came to collapsing the trial. So right away they mentioned the EDL because they want you to hate Tommy Robinson. They want to remind you that he was part of this terrible hooligan group. And before you even read the article, remember how terrible he is. Because they're not allowed to say he's like a far-right racist anymore because they kept ha getting combated from that. So they have to go the factual factual route. And the first gripe they have against him is him saying that no mainstream media covered it. Uh, Robinson claimed the mainstream media, quote unquote, of course, were not reporting the case, but journalists from the Huddersfield Examiner were in the court at the time. You guys know the Huddersfield Examiner, right? The mainstream international newspaper, Huddersfield Examiner. So that's their excuse, is nobody was reporting on it, says Tommy Robinson. But you, no, guys, the Huddersfield Examiner was there. Huddersfield, 160,000 population, basically the same as my town. I'm not about to claim that my town's newspaper is mainstream media. I'm not about to claim that anyone's reading the Huddersfield Examiner. You've never heard of it. I've never heard of it. It's not um, The Guardian. It's not The Independent. It's not CNN International. But somehow, Huddersfield Examiner, mainstream media. Point proven, Tommy Robinson, geez, okay? So basically what they think is that Tommy making a video outside the courthouse and asking the accused at the time, I guess, how they're feeling. Obviously, he's saying it in a derogatory way. I'm not going to pretend that he was just being like, hey, mates, how's it going? Uh, how you feeling? No, obviously, he was doing it to be like, how are you feeling because you're about to get convicted. But they're saying that basically making that video could sway the jury's opinion. This is such a frustrating, childish, nanny state way of looking at things. Basically, the say, they're saying the jurors are too stupid to differentiate between things that are in the courtroom, the evidence, the hearsay, whatever you might want to call it, and what's out there in the media. So much so that a video from Tommy Robinson, who's supposedly this horrible person that nobody should believe, would make it easier to convict for them to convict them. It would, it would change their minds enough so they shouldn't be watching these videos. And that's the basis behind the law here, is that when they say there's a media restriction, they can't talk about the court case or the lawsuit, whatever you call it. The theory behind that is, is if there's stuff out in the media, the jury's going to get, you know, swayed, and they won't know what, what is what and what's true and what's not true, and it might change their opinion. They're human beings. It's their responsibility to decipher what's true and what's not true. And also, you're being presented the evidence. That's what you base it on. You don't base it on things outside of the courtroom. You base it on the evidence and what's presented inside the courtroom. That's why we have the courtrooms, or else it would just be public opinion is what wins. It's what we decide, oh, Twitter doesn't like you. You're guilty. So they're saying that jurors can't make up their own minds. It's a very stupid and nanny state law. You're saying that they can't determine the truth for themselves if they see a Tommy Robinson video and they're about to quit these guys. Well, Tommy Robinson uh, called these guys a bunch of names and he doesn't really doesn't like them and uh, therefore they're guilt. Therefore, I'm going to decide that they're guilty because you know, smartest man in the world just says even though Tommy Robinson's the, supposed to be the worst person in the world, these people are more likely to convict them if they hear Tommy Robinson's video. So they make a big deal, big deal about this that. They almost had to stop the trial. They almost had to postpone it because they were going to ask the jurors if they've seen Tommy Robinson's video. Quote, following lengthy legal arguments, Judge Marson dismissed the application and refused to question members of the jury 
on whether or not they had watched Robinson's video. And the fact that they have to go through and just be like, well, now you got to ask them if they've seen the video because they might have changed their minds. By the way, they were all found very guilty uh, of not long enough sentences, by the way. It was 220 years for 20 dudes, which equates it to, I think it was almost 11 years per person. Not enough for uh, child grooming for, I think it was seven years, something like that. Still horrible crimes. So maybe a few guys were just got really low and really high. I'm not sure. But it seems to me like it's not at all. But I'm not going to die on that hill. Now they want to send Tommy Robinson back to jail for years for what they said was like harassing the person going into the courtroom and, of course, reporting on it, among other things. None of which are, are serious things at all. So one hand, they're saying that he might sway the court to convict people. By making this video, he might sway the court to convict people that might not be convicted otherwise. And then they say it's also horrible that he could have stopped them from being convicted quicker than they should have been for delaying the trial. You can't have it both ways. He's bad for making a video which could get them convicted. He's bad for making a video that doesn't get, because they wouldn't get convicted quick enough. You can't have it both ways. And the justice system in England has become a mockery, and it's a real shame. And when judges and politicians fall back on these silly laws, which take the trust out of the people that they've selected. They're already putting the trust in the hands of the people that they've selected to be jurors. And then they're trying to take it, take the trust away from them by saying you can't be exposed to anything that might contradict what you might or may not think already. It's very nanny state. It's very disappointing that somebody has to go to jail for this. It's like they want something bad to happen to them. I can't tell you what's in these people's heads, in the prosecutors and the judges' heads, but He's already gone to jail for this, and to send him back for something as silly as this has to mean, in my mind, that they want him shut up, they want something bad to happen to him, they want him to no longer be a problem. It's a system in England that has gone way too far, and now they're going as far to say that you're a bad person when you do, and you're a bad person when you don't, and no matter what you do, we're going to do whatever we can to get you out of here.